Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode, what is it, 109? Uh, 109, yeah. Of the ADV podcast. Uh, we're very happy to have you here today. We've got a lot of things to talk about. Most of them very important. Some hilarious stuff too, though, so don't worry. It's not all going to be uh, serious. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a funny one today. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. We're going to saunter right into it with uh, what's new, where we talk about what's new specifically with regards to China. And boy, do we have some interesting stuff for you today. I got to ask you a question, Seamilk. Yes. If you were in Tianjin right now, yeah, people know Tianjin, right? It's the nah, <laughs> maybe not. Don't. It's a very important city for China. Import, Insane. important city. Maybe you heard about that massive explosion that happened there. It was like a nuclear bomb going off, basically. But it was they were illegally storing chemicals in a warehouse at the port, with no safety regulations or whatever, and it blew up, destroying. You know, it literally was like a a big a, like as if someone attacked. And yeah, it was insane. It was they. You saw the burned out it's like cars. Like a Tianjin explosion. Yeah. You'll know. Anyway, it's also very important for China's finance because it's mm. a big port up there. Yeah. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, it's kind of going into lockdown right now, like Shanghai. Yeah. So it's near Beijing, by the way. Yeah, it's very. Close yeah, they're to doing a. Uh, by the way, Tianjin's a massive rival city for Beijing, and Beijing doesn't like Tianjin. Right. And kind of like how it doesn't like Shanghai. Mm. So if you think about it, um, it makes a whole lot of sense that they would not put Beijing into this horrific lockdown like they're doing with Tianjin, just yeah. like they did with Shanghai. So anyway, because people knew what, what had happened in Shanghai, which, by the way, uh, we'll talk about it a little later, but don't believe anyone if they tell you that the Shanghai lockdowns are over because they're not. No. Not at all. Nope. People are still locked down. Uh, some people are getting like a a 40-minute window to go shopping if they've got... We'll, we'll talk about it later. It's very complicated. Anyway... So people in Tianjin are like, oh, no, they're locking us down. We've seen what happened to Shanghai. So what did one very adventurous man do? Let's have a look. Let's take a look. This is his, how he got out. <laughs> okay. Um, let me play the video for us here. So if they can get outside the perimeter, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But could potentially not be in a lockdown zone. Yeah. Of course, they're tracking this. Brave gentleman, if you're listening, uh, there's a man on a paramotor as he flies over the city of Tianjin yeah. trying to escape the lockdown. Yeah. Which was, uh, which I just love to see. Clearly, you know, it would have gotten caught. Yeah. But he tried his Well, you see, bit. like, how they've blocked the road off there and stuff. Yeah. Um, look, it's it's actually quite ridiculous how bad it's gotten. And you've seen people trying to, like, swim with homemade rafts and yeah. trying to, to get out of the Shanghai lockdowns and so on. And people trying to escape, climb down ladders and all sorts. Yeah. Honestly, it's been tough for people that have been stuck in places like Shanghai and Tianjin and various other places around China. The zero COVID policy is outlandish. Oh, it's kind of like this for you listeners out there. Oh, a Ooh, sorry. video of a man trying to sweep the water back uh, into, into the away, for the, away from the ocean or into the ocean. Into because, the ocean. Because to be honest, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, we thought we'd uh, start out with something okay. rather... Um, I don't know. Would you call this hilarious? Would yeah, you call absolutely. This... It's, going, it's, okay. sad, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, this is called No Hope Girl. It's no going Hope around. Uh, it's viral in China right now. Yeah. Um, and Chinese people are finding a lot of sympathy and inspiration. Mm -hmm. so you can take us out of there. Sure. Finding a lot of sympathy and inspiration with No Hope Girl, um, who was interviewed. It's just a little girl that was interviewed about her hopes and dreams. Yeah. And uh, she had some great responses. Yeah. So we're... that are really resonating with Chinese people. Yeah. So let's see what the interviewer is asking her. Like, are you scared of starting school? Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> I have no hope. Uh, yeah, man. so basically, uh, for those of you who couldn't see this, um, the interviewer is asking you, like, what are you looking forward to in school? Nothing. Don't you have any wishes or small hopes? Nothing. I don't have any hopes. No. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, what you, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, whatever. She's like, I, yeah, I have no hopes. Yeah. Well, maybe she won. I mean, I got yeah. no hopes. Yeah. Obviously, she, she was just nervous, but you can she tell. She like nervous and like also just didn't want to be part of this. But mm -hmm. the, it's not about the reality of the conversation. It's about the, the transcript and the words. Yeah. And people, it just really resonated with netizens in China. Yeah. Because right now, especially people that are stuck in lockdowns and, and the, yeah. the economic woes, people don't understand. You know, we're, we're facing a big, 
um, stock market crash yeah. and, and Bitcoin and everything's going down. Everyone's having a, oh, this is a terrible time, yeah. which it's true financially for people that have investments and stuff. Mm. It's devastating right mm. now around the world. But you have to realize why. It's because it's tie everything's tied to China. Yeah. And that's why we're seeing this massive downtick in everything. It's because it's all I feel like it's, it's tied. just not being talked about enough because we're not, we're no investment experts, yeah. no e economists or anything. But at the same time, I feel like people just leave China out of this question when they're talking about why did I just lose 50 grand a month in the stock market? I knew someone yeah. today that just <clears throat> lost 25 grand today, ouch, right? Ouch. And a family member, right? Mm. And I feel like nobody's talking about why that is. And obviously there's huge global implications and there's like, you know, a p p possibility of going to recession, all this kind of stuff. But China is playing a massive factor in this kind well, of What's the supply chain? It's all tied together. Come on, the, the Shanghai lockdown has prevented massive factories from being able to work. Sure. People, in fact, and uh, big companies like Apple and so on, they get all of their parts yeah. shipped out of Shanghai. Yeah, and, good point. You know, so it really has affected the entire world, what's going on with these lockdowns, but sure. also other slowdowns in the Chinese economy and also the, the big restrictions they've put on Chinese companies listing. Yeah. And they've basically just frozen certain companies on the stock market and so on and so forth. So China is... The, the root cause of all of these downturns that if we've you been really seeing, like, like really, like you really dig into it, has at the very least a very, a very big, big part, part yeah. to play in For what's sure. going on right now. So the reason I'm saying that is not not to say like, oh, woe is us on the outside and China's at fault. I'm saying you have to understand how much the people inside of China are suffering. Oh, for sure. Because the entire economy, other than this house of cards built on you know real estate and all that yeah. nonsense. It relies, insider trading. yeah, insider trading and stuff. It absolutely relies on the factories and on the investments from you know Western and, and foreign companies. Yeah, that's how it runs. So when you've shut down all these factories and shut down all these jobs and shut down everything, the people inside of China are really feeling it. Yeah, and that's I think why people are resonating so much with what this little girl has to say. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, move on, shall we? Yes. <laughs> We don't get copyright from the meme. Yeah, speaking about that. Um, oh, yeah. Just wanted to point out, you know, our last, this is our last week's um, episode. Thank you very much for joining us well, last week. Way, it was yeah. great. It was a fantastic episode. Not allowed to be monetized, and it's been under review for... Well, it's not even not allowed to be monetized. It hasn't made any money because it's been under review to see if it's appropriate. By the way, there's nothing at all inappropriate in that episode sure. usually they review it within a few hours so we lose like 30 or forty thousand views of monetization this time we lost over two hundred thousand because they still mm. have reviewed it yeah and it says please allow up to seven days so you're telling me we should wait as long as the video is completely dead <laughs> sure. you know with no views and then you may, might be able to get monetized by the way it's been seven days now it's still under review yeah so we just wanted to point that out if you do want to support and, us. And, well, I, I wanted to point it out because I wanted to say thank you for each and every of one of you who support us here yeah. through Super Chats and, and every other way through right. through Patreon and everything. Because yeah. you guys are fantastic. Yeah. Without you guys, we'd be really kind of in a lot of trouble. Right. Speaking you of know? which, Patreon, oh, you yeah, can we do. Us. Here, we'll plug this quickly. Our Patreon is where you can go talk to us directly. I yep. answer the messages there. Sit right next to Winston, so you're talking to both of us. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'm the one typing. Yeah, yeah. You, you look through. You do the slog work. I'm. I yeah. just throw in my opinion. And uh, <laughs> just throw it again while I talk about it. Right okay, you want to do that again? Let's, um, let's do it again. Let me put together a slick little graphic. You did know? you though? I did. Why is it not working? Oh, there we go. Um, I did. Yeah. patreoncom slash Uh You can support the channel, but also you'll get the un censored, uncut, uncut Yamcha. video, Yamcha yeah. video with everything, Q and A, and all that stuff. Every episode goes up on there, too, Cool. Um, after this live. All right, let's move on. Uh, but then again, I just want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you who watch our videos. It's not about whether you, you know, support us in any other way. The fact that you're watching us is honestly the most important thing out of everything. Just wanted to say thank mm -hmm. you. You know, so don't feel like we think any lesser of anyone who just watches. No, of course, of course not. not. Anyway, so what's this? We got a Derucci sighting, didn't we? Yeah, wild Derucci setting. So for, you, for those of you guys that don't know, let's just pause it real, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Derucci is a, it was a kindergarten teacher in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. uh, China, and he got paid a white monkey job to do, basically a white monkey job is when they pay you just to not be Chinese sure. for advertisements. And he went to a mattress company out of Dongguan. Which yeah. is like this horrific factory district in Guangzhou, Oh yeah, yeah, Southern we, China. we know it well. If like you, if you find like a toy or something later on, there's a good chance it's from Dongguan. Yeah. Anyway, if it says made in China, but this this uh, shoes specifically shoes this mattress company 
is an OEM company. So they make mattresses for other people, other companies, low quality, right? Sure. Um, and all of a sudden they decided to rebrand. The mm. CEO has this story, right? It's, it's been scrubbed by the way. Okay. Well, actually my, believe it or not, my father-in-law is the one that showed me the story. It was all nice. on the internet back then. But they are like, why don't we rebrand and show this wise kind of white old dude and be like, he's the leader of Darucci mattresses. Yeah. And we will like become a luxury mattress brand, but it'll be a Chinese brand. But people sure. will think it's like Italian or something. Sure. So they hired this kindergarten teacher from Shenzhen to be the just this photo, like a fo- in a photo shoot. They paid him 10,000 RMB, allegedly, yeah. like 1,500 bucks. Yeah. And he became worldwide. Like now people see Darucci mattresses in like every country around the world. Yeah. And it's just this made up bullshit. It is. This guy has nothing fake. to do. He just, probably didn't even know it was for a mattress No, and he's company. dead, long dead. Yeah, he died. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there was a Darucci setting in LA apparently. Oh, maybe not LA. I can't, maybe it was up north actually in um, yeah. uh, Northern California. Right. And it was in, I think, it, yeah, I think it was outside of San Francisco. Yeah, subscribers send us yeah. this. And Darucci in America, it's, it's rare to see him in America. They've even got the little bronze statue. That's not that's, a real person in the background. Well, that's the thing is I, I sat on the uh, bronze statue's lap in, in Hui Zhou as a joke, and I never got to see the statue again. They made a bronze statue out of this dead mm. English teacher dude. They had it in Shenzhen near the, yeah. you know, I was, yeah, all but over as well. They were, I think they moved them around or something. Sure. They, yeah, they weren't always there, but they, he's the bronze statue is in the U.S. now. That's cool. Here, all the way on the West Coast. <laughs> and if you want to go see him, head over to California, sit yeah. down on his lap, take a picture. He's got a mask on, so you don't yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, but Darucci Wild in the U.S. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. 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 Next time we go back there, we should go and try and find it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely should shoot at least shoot like an intro of a video. Yeah. It'll be fun. In front of Darucci guys. I just thought that was kind of interesting. It is. It's obviously in a Chinese area, by the way. Mm, yeah. Because um, you can the see US. the Chinese characters. Is, yeah. I think it's. it was in, uh, oh, what is that? What is that super Chinese area? Roland Heights? Alhambra. Oh, Alhambra. Okay. Yeah. What's this next thing that we're looking at here? Uh, uh, Lao we Ban. Teach you a word. You can okay. give them a Chinese lesson. Lao Ban means boss. Mm-hmm. Now, it's quite common. It's more I, than that, though. Yeah, it's more than that. Yeah. But like when I first heard the word Lao Ban was when um, I, I learned how to address the, the kind of the boss of a shop. Yeah. So I used to always go to this place to get my bicycles and stuff. Because there's a bicycle, you know, there's bicycle shops. And so I would just, I heard other people say it. So I started to say, it. it's like, Lao Ban, Ni Hao, you know, like, hi, boss. It's a greeting. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like a respectful and you would, thing. you would always call the, the kind of, you can say Shi Fu is like a master, which you can say for like the workers. But the actual guy who runs the shop, it belongs to him. You'll say Lao Ban. You know, it's weird too, is there's regional differences too. Like if you go mm. to Shandong, yeah. people in Shandong call, all call each other Lao Shi. Mm. Even if they're not teachers, everyone's a laoshi. You call like the restaurant guy a laoshi, the bus driver's a laoshi. That's interesting. Yeah, everyone's yeah. a laoshi. Depends yeah. on where you are. But Lao Ban's very general. Yeah. You you say that to the leader of the situation. Sure. Right. So the Lao Ban is the boss. Yeah. Okay. And you can use it in, in a literal sense, like he's actually the boss of a company. And you can also use it as kind of like a, a way of honoring someone. Mm-hmm. You know, if he's like the top dog at the table or something, you can call him the Lao Ban. It's just yeah. depends on the situation. Sure. But it's very important to understand that it's also a very niche, not niche, very widespread aesthetic. It's literally the aesthetic it's for China. So we, we call it the Lao Ban aesthetic. Now, it's it's kind of like in the West, people will power dress, you know? So they'll, like, if you go to Wall Street or something, people wearing suits and all that kind of stuff, yeah. trying to look like, you know, hey, I'm a, I'm a, a sophisticated, like really important right person. Yeah, exactly, right. that type of thing. But in China, the look you want to go for if you want to exude success and want people to think that you're successful is the Lao Ban look. Yes. Now we are specifically talking about people, men over 45. Yes, yes. Um, and it's born of the CCP look. Yeah, because right? the CCP boss, like cadres and stuff, they all dress like this. Right, so we're going to show you what it looks like first. Yes, okay. And you're going to see through a very funny video. Yeah. We found. By the way, this is not a comedy video. This yeah. is a video from Douyin. And it's, it is well, it's from Xiaohongshu. It's from Xiaohongshu. Very similar. Yeah. It's kind of like TikTok, but it's alive. And yeah. they're trying to sell the Lao Ban look aesthetic clothes in China. Yeah. So, and they got Lao Ban, like Lao Ban models. Yeah. So we thought we'd show you this. These You'll guys are modeling. They're modeling these clothes. Okay. Yeah, this and is it's, the Lao Ban look. It's, it's kind of done in a funny way, but the, it's actually not a parody. No, though. no, no. They, they are selling these yeah. clothes. So let's take a look. 
You guys don't have to listen to it. Um, yeah. So yeah, what you usually have... Let me, let me bring that down, otherwise sure. it'll be like impossible. For what you have with the Laoban look is you have a usually fairly loose fitting polo shirt in a muted color. It's yeah. never a very stark solid color. Sure. So it's like kind of a muted color. You'll have short sleeves. It's very important that it's short yeah. sleeved. Yeah. And then you'll have it tucked into dress pants. And the yeah. dress pants are usually either black or khaki. I love how this guy shows you how you can take money in and out of your pocket. It's important. That's yeah. a Laoban thing See? to do. He's like, all right, now I'm going to be able to take the money there out of the pocket, put it back yeah. in. No problems, right? It's this almost as if the polo shirts have been bleached in the sun, like they're faded almost. Yeah. It's that, that color scheme. Yeah. We go back to that. Let's just, we, we have to take apart the look a little bit more. Okay, we'll take apart the look. Now, one thing that's very important about a Laoban look is you need to have a, uh, first of all, you have to wear pichier, which mm -hmm. are dress shoes. Right. Leather shoes. Most, most actually... I'd say half the time are fake. Yeah, they're, no, they're not real leather. leather. Yeah. It's, and you can get leather ones. This is something I found very difficult. When I was in China, because I always wore suits, right? Sure. I would try to get shoes. Because you walk so much in China, you wear them out all the time, right? So my proper shoes, like proper dress shoes, would wear out. And I try to find replacement shoes, and I could never find good ones because they were all weird. It's like a hybrid between a tennis shoe or a, a like a, you know oh, what I mean? I know exactly like, you know, what it's you're like saying. so. It, it looks, looks like a dress shoe, but it's not. Yeah, underneath yeah. it's got like grip soles. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I like exactly. sports, like a we Nike. Did, we did not plan this. I no, totally forgot yeah, about that. Yeah. That's a key element of the aesthetic, yeah. the Laoban aesthetic. Yeah. So it looks, it looks like it's kind of a dress yes. shoe on top, but it's but actually it's like, like a sneaker. It's like a sneaker. It's actually, but it's. So much uglier than a normal and, dress. And shoe. it's also, yeah, it is. It's yeah. very ugly and it's very uncomfortable too. Sure. You'd think it'd be comfortable, but it's no. not. I see, I, I'm so out of the I was so out of the shoe game in China because I was literally five sizes over yeah. the top. You go anywhere in China. I'm not even joking. These guys might find this interesting. I'm in a place, let's say I'm in a place, I'm six one, right? Yeah. I'm in a place where the guys are my size, if not even taller sometimes. Let's say somewhere up in Dongbei. Yeah. The, the highest shoe size that you can find is about a, a size 10. Yeah. And or yeah. If, if, you're, if you're lucky, average for the top is like a nine. Right? That's how I'm, I'm a nine and a half. Right. So, so I could, you could max it I out. Could, you know, it was uncomfortable, but I could always find like a shoe that I could squeeze into. Right. Yeah. I, I'm a size 13. You Impossible. can't find anything. You have there. to bring it, it in better. from Hong Kong. But the thing is, the people are just as big. So yeah. it's so weird. Mm. You know, I always thought that was bizarre. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah lots of my foreign friends couldn't get yeah, shoes. Sure. Yeah, it was an issue. Anyway, back to the mm. Laoban look. When you are yeah. when you have the Laoban look, you got to have a belt. Yeah. And you pointed out a very key element, a key element. Oh, you need to have keys, like a keychain mm -hmm. that dangles off your belt. Kind of like a janitor. Yeah. And of course... A, if you can, a cell phone holster type yes. thing. That's pretty at important. least that was pretty important for a while. I don't know anymore. Well, and also I think a, a something we we managed to forget was you, you should probably wear a watch, mm. right? That's mm. definitely a thing. And yeah. usually either a leather band watch or a fake gold watch. Yeah, right. Yeah, depends that's... on what you know style Laoban look you're going for. Now yeah. sometimes these shirts can have stripes on them. Yeah, but you need that loose fitting polo and you gotta tuck it in. It's this is also considering uh, dressing up in China. Because look, China is a very casual sure. society. Yeah. I found it bizarre, dude. I went to this concert hall in China. You know, they had that big, the big concert grand, grand theater, or whatever the hell it's called, you know, where they had the library and stuff in Shenzhen. And I went as part of, I can't even remember what it was, but I went to a concert thing where they had actual conductors and the conductors were coming up to accept awards. And they were coming up dressed like Laobans and in t-shirts, dirty t-shirts and stuff. I was like, this is bizarre to me because you've got a full orchestra there and they're all dressed up like they, you know. Yeah, of course. Like orchestras dress up. part of the show, right? Yeah. But then the conductors are coming up to receive their awards dressed like a, I don't know, like a peasant boy that you would see in, <laughs> in you know, like Tom Sawyer or something like that. <laughs> wow. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. It was really bizarre. And they're getting like flowers and bouquets, right. but they dressed like literally like they rolled out of a pigsty. Wow. Like seriously, I couldn't believe it. Huh. That was the first time I saw this weird aesthetic. But look, that's China is a very casual mm. society, mm. which is nice in some ways. Yeah, for sure. I stood out it's wearing a suit. I that. stood out. That's why I wore my suit most sure. of the time is it opened up so many opportunities for me because I stood out. Not many people wear suits in China. Yeah. But when I would go to, when I was working for Tencent, for instance, and they'd have an important speech to make, you know, the guys that I was working with, they would dress up Laoban style. Normally, they'd just be t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. 
but now they so have to go make up a, is Lao Bao. Yeah, because it's they sure. get a collared pearl or shit, yeah. but a nice one because as you're gonna find out, you actually get really good ones. Mm. When I say good, like luxury. Oh, ones. I'll get it well yeah. into that in a second. Yeah. So they would dress up in the polo shirt. They still wear jeans, the younger guys, but they put the polo shirt on at least, and that's their idea of like formal attire. Yeah, it tucked in. Yeah. Yeah, you got to tuck in yeah. the polo apparently. Yeah. So I want to go on to show you like how this was born and yeah. what's considering considered like big lab on energy. Sure. So you have these guys, you know, these are obviously live sellers who are trying to sell these lab on clothes. They're probably quite cheap. Um, and have a look at this. Yeah. This is a an example of how much a Laoban shirt's gonna go, it's gonna run you. Yeah. Right. Fifteen RMB, it's about two, three bucks. Yeah, okay? it's cheap. Two, three bucks. We're talking like you can go out, get yourself a stack of Laoban shirts for under twenty bucks. Sure. Right. We've done it. We Dude, used to wear Laoban shirts. When when we used to go riding on yep. our bike adventures, because your your clothes would get ruined, like yep. if it was raining or something, you'd get drenched. You just walk into any of those like clothing stores in the small towns where they've got the speakers blaring. And you could pick up like for 10, 15 RMB, just like this, you could get just a Laoban shirt. Yes, yes. And you wear it or you use it to like wipe the mud off That's your bike or usually whatever. I would wear it and then when it got dirty, I use it to clean my bike and then yeah. throw it out. Yeah, Because it's, <laughs> it's that cheap. Yeah, it is. Right? It's, it's disposable clothing. Now, and then they're not good quality, by the way. Right. Now, actually, someone in the chat has a great point. Mm -hmm. That's why Lacoste is popular. It makes sense now. Absolutely. And we're going to teach you something, okay? Yeah. Now, this will shock you. Okay. Okay. We're going to look at something. This is really what set it all off. Mm. Okay. Obviously, you have Ralph Lauren and, and Lacoste. And stuff. By the way, did you see all the knockoff Lacostes that you had in China? Remember, oh, yeah. we got all those ridiculous ones. We should bring that in sometime. We'll do it, we'll do it next time. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, mm. Sept Wolves. Sept okay, Wolves. Well, enter Sept Wolves. Sept Wolves are in Chinese is Chi Pilang, which it yeah. means seven wolves. Okay. I, yeah, I get that. But what I don't get about this and never understood is what is Sept? I thought, it's, is it September? Yeah, uh, you know, well, it's like a Latin thing, like oh, is except it? you know, it's like oh, a like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Sept, like seven. Now you've explained it yeah. to me. I always wondered, like, what's going sure. on? Is it septic? Is it a septic wolf? Could be a septic wolf. <laughs> you know, what we're I mean? gonna call it septic wolf. <laughs> okay, septic. Septic wolf, wolf is, I and I was shocked. Mm. Is like the go-to Chinese brand for Lao Ban wear. I used to buy Sept Wolf socks and stuff. Yeah, interesting. Because it was th th everywhere. It was everywhere. Because yeah. it's the it's the premier Chinese brand. But what's insane is that you can find very cheap Sept Wolf stuff. Yes. Right? If you're out in a market like or socks. something. Yeah, yeah, but they're all fake though. Yeah. They're faking Sept Wolves. Yeah, they fake Sept Wolves. Original Sept Wolves. And keep in mind, this is low ass quality stuff. It's not great. It, no. Even the real stuff I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. But you go into an airport and they got Lao Bans are rolling through airports, right? Yeah. And the thing with Lao Ban style is that a lot of these Lao Bans have a ton of money, but you'd yeah. look at them and you'd be like, they're, they don't have money. Sure. But they have a lot of money. They just don't know how to spend it. Yeah. They want to buy the nicest stuff so what these chinese companies do is they market towards them and yeah. then ja artificially jack up the prices yeah so the lao bonds will say hey i got like you know 400 bucks to spend on a shirt because i'm a rich mother effer sure right and i own a factory or something sure sure but instead of going to italy or new york or something to go buy the latest fashion they'll just go to like some fancy area of china mm. and then spend 10 50 100 times the price of what this should be yeah and the sept wolves cheapy lang yeah is the premier, the yes. premier Laoban attire. Yes, yes. In fact, it was pretty funny because they used Chinese models for the cheaper ones yes. and then they used white monkeys. Yeah, for the for expensive, the expensive ones. ones. And we're talking, how much is 2000 RMB now? Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, that's like, that's $300 for a Laoban shirt. Yeah. Laoban shirts cost a dollar. Yeah, you know, like, we're just talking about a normal polo shirt here. Yes. Okay, so. We thought it was kind of funny. We were looking, bucks. We're looking through their website, and they saw we saw they use white monkeys, like you said, only for the most expensive ones. Yeah, and keep in mind, white people like in China, they don't wear, they don't rock the Laban look. Laban's for important people. What is with this guy's These hair? These white monkeys looking <laughs> insane, by the way. Yeah, uh, I just, I don't know where they found uh, these guys, but <laughs> these were in the belt. That's such a Laoban belt, That's, everything. The thing is, they're doing the Laoban look. Yes. And they're using foreigners to be the, the white monkey, like, models. Boss, yeah. But it seems so out of place. It's so wrong. This is the first time I've seen Laoban look be, like, Laoban chic be yeah. modeled by foreigners. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. weird. It is. It's really weird. You know, you got to have that belt buckle up pretty high. Very, very high. Yeah, the higher, the better. Higher, the better. Yeah. Uh, anyway. It's a CCP look, right? It is, it is.
You'll Xi see Jin, these guys. Xi like that it with is. this belt. But they make cigarette septuals. Which is insane. They're, I used to smoke. They are horrible. Mm. But a lot of uh, places get busted for bringing them in their borders. You know yeah. when you mentioned that South Africa thing? Yeah, yeah. I looked it up. It happened in America, too. Oh, really? Yeah, Chinese people were bringing them and selling them in their takeout restaurants. Yeah, you know, my I had a Taiwanese kind of like a, a uncle figure in South Africa. And he used to... He used to get these from the Chinese sailors at uh-huh. the port. Right. They would smuggle it into him, and then it's he was would... this brand. Yeah, Chipilan. I think Sept Wolves is probably like the most well-known uh, outside of China brand. I mean, does anyone know what Chipilan is anywhere? You go no. do a poll outside in Philadelphia, or but Sept Wolves. But also think about it, though. I guess he was selling to the local um, Chinese diaspora, maybe through the you know his dodgy connections. Maybe, maybe selling to the African. You know what I will say, guys. Chinese people will not smoke cheapy la. Yeah, I suppose that is not. Unless that's you're, a Diolian, I like, guess if you're like bad. a no, but no, it's not like that. Right. When you're in another country, yeah, different. It's, then it's like, oh, this is woman to go on, uh, you know, go oh, on You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah so would, like whip out to four. Like whip it out. No, but they'd whip it out as well, like at the Chinese restaurant or something. They smoke in their own Chinese brand rather than a as a smoker in Benson China, and Hedges as special a smoker mind. in China. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You might be right outside of China. As a smoker yeah. in China, you don't want to be caught no. dead with cheap. No, not, not in, not in no. China. No. People would be like, what the, What are you doing? I remember the ones that this uncle guy was bringing into South Africa were more premium, though. They had like they a, have red, they had a red yeah. package and they're with still, gold. They're considered a bad cigarette in yeah. China. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So you got this, you got cheapy line, you got septuals. Yes. You got these the outlandish top. prices. They, they set the scene. Yeah. The CCP sheet. So we decided to go through some of the B-roll. Read um, the lava. Yeah, some of the B-roll that we have, you know, from when I shot it and you shot it back in mm-hmm. uh, China. And we thought we'd just spot a couple of lavans for we'll, you here. We'll critique them. We're going to critique them. Yeah. So let's let this guy come down the stairs. He's got a nice little gate. He's got a good gate for a lava, and I'll tell you one. He's got the bag. Right. Yeah, He's... pause it right there. Okay. That's very important. Oh, I better. Oh, sorry, I'll take it back. It's okay. I lost the, the cursor. Where is the cursor? There it is. Wait, we got a... It's important. We need to have a cursory glance here. Yeah. Okay, so where is it? Let's get back to that. It's coming. We have another chat. <laughs> We're not sponsored by Cheapy Lung or Sept Wolves, yeah. by the way. Um, horrible okay. Horrible brand. So one thing I like about this guy, what, what stands out to you? He's got the gut. He's got the gut. Mm. Key. Super key. Yeah. And you mentioned the bag. Yeah, the bag. That's fantastic. Yeah. What a nice element to add on. It was kind of strange to me because... For the longest time, and I, I don't know if it's still the case, it probably is, but you would find this style kind of went out of fashion in the big cities. But then when we oh, used yeah. to travel, when we traveled to the lesser oh, big yeah. cities, you would see it as kind of like a man bag, but it's like a it's like a purse. It's like a purse. It's he's got one under. Yeah, his it's bag. under his arm. It's like a woman's purse. Yeah, but it's wo- not his woman's purse. No, 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 it's not no. His wife's it, purse, it looks way. like a woman's yeah. purse, but it became a like a. A man thing to carry around. It's yep. like chic for the Laoban man to carry a woman's Thus purse. this guy. Yeah. Which, He's got one under his arm. It's a, either yeah, fake, probably so, fake LV. Because his wife, or his, I presume it's his wife, has a handbag there, for yeah. those of you who can't see. So he's, so, he, that's his man bag. That's his man bag, yeah. Now, one issue I have with this, he does, by the way, he's got a perfect example of those shoes you're talking about. Oh, he does, yeah. It's the, the fake dress shoes that are actually kind of sneakers. You yeah. slip them on. Yeah. Now, important, very important detractor here is that that Laoban shirt, it's a Laoban shirt, yeah. but it is not tucked in. He no. gets massive detracting points from That's that. That's no good. It's got to be gonna, tucked in. I'm going to give him a four out of 10, by the okay. way. Okay, four out of 10? For, for Laoban chic. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. Here we have an older Laoban. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't good enough because, first of all, his pants are like proper dress pants, not those... You know, the the dress... Well said. Those kind of pants are kind of like a... I don't even know what the material is. I know but what you mean. It's they're, different. They're, they're more almost, durable. They're almost like they should be part of a cheap suit. Yes. Not a Laoban look. So yeah. it points off for the pants. Uh, what points up mm-hmm. for the belt position. Yes. Those pants are high. They need to be yep. as high as hell. Yep. That's how you get the Laoban pant look. And the detractor for the shirt. Give it's, a pause right there. Problem with this shirt, it's a real shirt. It's it's a Laban look. It looks bad. Mm-hmm. It's that it's that kind of bad. <laughs> it's got the aesthetic. colors. Yeah. In fact, but it's, it's a shirt. His one sleeve is striped. The other sleeve that isn't. Is, then he's got striped half down. The that shirt. is horrific. Yeah. Okay. Laoban, the back is Laoban is fuck from, yeah, from that perspective. Okay. Sleeves are too long. You cannot it's, have long. Well, sleeves. it's supposed to be a polo shirt, not a real yeah. shirt. No. Okay, and that's that, that's where he messed up. But that's a five out of ten. He's got the pants for yeah. it for sure. This guy walking by. Ah, oh, man, he's like a three. He's 
Give him. Let's give him a, another walkthrough. Like okay, let him. Have, let him have his catwalk. All right. He's got the shoes. He's got the pants. Yep. He's got the belt. But a t-shirt. Go Come back on. though. It's very important to, to show what's going on here though. Okay. There's two. There's two key uh, body positions for a Laoban, and yeah. it's based on CC. They literally pick CCP officials because they those CCP officials have power. Yeah. CCP officials either stand like this. Yeah. While they smoke cigarettes and look at stuff. Yes. Or more importantly, yeah, they'll hands like behind, this, the back. behind the back yeah. and they'll look at something like this. You'll see that loud. But, so that guy gets points for having one of the yeah. you know gates or the positions. But seriously, that though, the t-shirt. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I give him a two, two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Now this is a. I I threw him in here from your why? furniture. Why? He doesn't look like a Lauban. I'll tell you why. Okay, why? He's got the perfect cigarette hold. And he's also got one of those fake fapiaos. He's got a fake fapiao, 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 and he's fapiao. got a fake phone. <laughs> yeah, yes, those yes. are key Lauban yeah. elements. But yeah. unfortunately, his outfit, you no. wouldn't wear a jacket. No, 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 no. Right. I give him a three, but I love the elements. Yeah. What do we got here? This guy on the left, this is a great Lauban example. Unfortunately, he's untucked, but look at his- Oh, the guy behind him. The yeah. guy behind him. That's a Lauban. Yes. He's dangling. Gucci, fake Gucci belt. That's him. That's a Lauban right there. That's a Lauban look, yeah. Chef's kiss. Yeah. That guy, if we could see him, unfortunately, yeah. we can't see like, But You can see that the key's dangling there. Oh my gosh. If he had a cigarette, he'd be a 10. I'd yeah. give him a nine because yeah. he's almost there. He probably does have a cigarette, but in the Shenzhen Metro, you're not allowed to smoke. So he's just True. waiting for his, his attempt. His attempt, yeah. Yeah. So this is a- I wanted to point this guy out here. Okay. This is this is a, a better, more hip version of the. I think Laoban it's the aesthetic. younger, the it's, younger. And I call this the real estate Laoban look. Right, right. It's you get the younger, handsome guys mm. selling houses, yeah. selling apartments, and they usually wear this Laoban shirt. But if it's not as ugly, it's less of a polo shirt, more of a real shirt. It's so a, it's got it's buttons cut. all the way down. It's always short sleeve yeah, though. Yeah. You got to have the short sleeves. This guy, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit better put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say. That's oh, like you, a that's a six for Laoban aesthetic. Yeah, look, there's another one behind. Yeah, see, that's the that's the, the real same estate thing. Laoban. Yeah, it is definitely. You know, that's your working your your working man. You know, yeah. in the office type thing. Sure. It's kind of an an evolution of the Laoban. It is. Look. I think it's a better version. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, we have more. Don't worry. Rate the Laoban look is definitely a thing. This guy coming up here. I wanted to be, take us out of the pause there. Okay. Take us out of here. This okay. is all right. To me, this is a great example. Okay, how so? Um, oh, go wait, back. I, got, I got to go back. Sorry. Watch the guy on the right. The guy on the right? Okay. This guy is much too young to be a Laoban. Yet oh, that guy. He is guy. going all in. This guy is probably 25. Yeah, right? yeah. He's got a Laoban shirt, unfortunately, untucked. Yeah, no, he's got he loses Lauban points. Pants, mm -hmm. And he's got Laoban sandals. And we never, we didn't point out the Laoban sandals. Yeah, those happen. That is such a Laoban thing. When you get a Laoban that's in hotter weather, he doesn't want to wear dress shoes, he wears the dress sandals. Yes, absolutely. That guy's way too young to be pulling this look off. Yeah, but well, I he give pulls him it points. off. Yeah, yeah, it is. I give him a seven. Really? Okay, yeah. I'll give him a five. He's untucked. Yeah, I'll give him a five. Yeah. He's untucked. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, we have... Um, now that's this is, not a Laoban no, no, look. This is, Again, evolution of the Laoban look going into the hairdresser look. Okay. I just like the way you're smoking a cigarette. Okay. He's got the cigarette. He's got the bag. Oh he's yeah, he does. Up past it. Yeah, right, he's gone past that. Um, what do we got over this here? This guy here. This is right there. See the sandals? Oh yeah, the sandals. You can see the sandals. He's got a rolled up, almost a capri version of these dress pants. Yeah. He's untucked, but that is a Laoban shirt of note. Yeah, definitely. He's got the cigarettes in the pocket. Yeah, that guy. I mean, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give that guy five. Now these we have a. It's trio. like a trio of Laoban. Unfortunately, two of them have long sleeves, okay, but look back. at how they kind of like, almost like a, you know, a cell phone it's reception not, bar. It's tall, <laughs> tallest to shortest. This yeah. guy's mass much taller than me on the Yeah, line. yeah. He's huge. This guy <laughs> on the right, unfortunately, is not. But anyway, look at this guy. I, go back. You, okay. The important element is the short guy. Okay. What about him? It's an element that I didn't see in some of the B-roll head. He's got the flat top and that's really important. Oh, right. You get, you get the hair growing like this and you go... Yeah, that's, that's a quite, it's quite popular. It's quite sure. popular. Yeah, uh, but these guys, decent Laoban aesthetic. Uh, mm. Overalls group will give them a. Five. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, this I shot in Huajian Bay, which is a very, like it's cutting edge. It's the Silicon Valley of China type thing. Mm -hmm. It's in Shenzhen, first tier city, and this is. 2019. So we're talking yeah. about recent fashion. It's not like we're going back in the archives. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Laban aesthetic has been there since I moved yeah. till I left. <laughs> it's not going away. <laughs> no. If, yeah. you, 
It's the CCP look. Yeah. It's the power look, like it you is. said, power yeah. dressing. Oh, we got a dancing lao bun. This is great. Why don't you yeah. explain this one? I love this one. Well, you know what happens is when you go to the, this is something I loved about China, by the way, is if you go to any park, mm -hmm. um, especially at, at night, you'll see people go there after work and they just do different kinds of dancing. Yeah. And it's usually salsa or it's some kind of square dance. So they do Tango. all this. They do all sorts of kind of dancing. Yeah, Sometimes they just do like random ass stuff like what this guy. Gets me pumped up. I Remember our friend Gary came? Yeah. And um, it was actually exactly here where this Laoban is. And he went dancing. He's a Laoban age. Yeah. So he joined in. We had a couple of drinks. He joined in and he actually like ripped his tendon or whatever. Poor Gary. We had to put him on a bike and wheel him to a taxi and all that. Anyway, fact of the matter is. Um, here we got a Laoban dancing, but I think the fun part about this is his shoes. Yeah. It's important that some elements never match. Yeah. It's very important. At least he's trying to be hip. Like, no, I love this guy. And he's actually kind of almost wearing a Laoban shirt with army surplus yeah. vibes. Yeah, big time. He's got the keys. He's got belt. the keys jangling. Yeah. He's got the belt. He's, I love this guy. Yeah. He exudes Laoban He had like energy. all the moves, dude. I know. He's he was good. Well, put him back on. Yeah, he little, deserves a little bit more. I, I got to tell you something. Okay, there's a lot of controversy over these um, dancing things, right? Because I was speaking to some, uh, some, some rel Chinese relatives of mine, and there was a scandal um, where... Like some uncle used to go to these parks to hook up with the Ais. And that's kind of like, they would old go. Ladies, yeah, yeah the, the old lady said, so like, basically what happens is they go to these parks to cheat on each other and do stuff. The old people, <laughs> they go there to like meet, oh, to meet people, man, you know? They love to, but Jesus, yeah, that's gross. I know, but it's just kind of hilarious. Yeah. I thought it was really funny. I wonder if this guy's doing a little fertility dancing. I mean, think, dancing. think about it though, no. It's like, it's, it's like a social thing to do. Sure. It's like you go hang out, you meet people. I don't know. Maybe. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was yeah. great energy. And this is Laban energy. I give this guy an eight and a half. Yeah. Um, now this is, a, okay, pause here. That's the, that's the, the stand. The, this is the stand. Now yeah. the guy's not got the a Laban look. He's got the evolution. Yeah. And he's too, he's too put together. Yeah. But he's got the perfect, is that not the perfect CCP yeah. stance? It the is. Laban stance. Uh, and behind the back, look yeah. like you don't care. Nope. Stand around. You got to have a cigarette, have something else. Yeah. You know, dismissive. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's I don't him. care about anything, you peasants. It's like that. <laughs> yeah, he's just standing Love there. Love that. I don't need to move my arm. Somebody else will do that for me. No. Oh, yeah. This... Can we explain that? The, what is the opposite of the Laoban look? It's kind of the Beijing bikini gangster look. It's like a Heisha Hui look. Yeah, and which a, means mafia. Yeah, gang. Like we'll call it the mafia look. Yeah. Yeah, gangster. Maybe gangster look. Yeah, gang gangster. gangster. Thugs, okay. basically. Thug look. Yeah, the thug look, yeah. Um, and this happens a lot in the south specifically because it's so hot there. Yeah, this guy's probably a northerner though. Yeah. The thing is when you go down south, you'll see this. Whenever it's really, really hot, people roll mm. up their shirts, yeah. to, uh, you know, a certain type of person, to show off their belly to cool down. Yeah. Which is bizarre. It's a me. Chinese medicine thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, why not just take the shirt off if you really want to? Because you got to show, show your epic love on shirt. Yeah. Now, this is the polar opposite. And again, can you pause it real quick? Yeah. You'll get this kind of like splotchy pattern and it's usually collarless. That's how you show your rebellion. Sure. These guys, a lot of times will be skinheads. They'll have this crazy haircut type stuff. Yeah. And they have the kind of chubby gangster It's kind of like Chinese ox. Chinese ox, If right? he was down south, he'd be, you know. It's the opposite of the CCP look yeah. in that they are not put together. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'll mess you up. They get all in your face. That's kind of, you know, so the CCP look, Laoban guys, they're trying to get respect. Yes, and power. Because mm. power, like, they want respect from people because they want people to think that they're connected. Yes. These guys want respect because they want people to think they're fear. a thug that'll, yeah, out of fear. It's well yeah. said. So it's a different. So it's yeah. literally opposing things. Yeah. 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 But they're both like kind of LARPing as being powerful. Yeah. Um, um, so I just want to show you that's and this is oh yeah the here. rear of Laoban mixed with the they're the friends thug. yeah they're friends the thug and the Laoban together yeah right yeah there they are we have this guy here he's got the you know the classic Beijing pause that right there look at that Beijing bikini exposing yeah. the belly cooling down yeah this guy going for the power Laoban look tucked in polo he had the keys you can friends. see his key belt he's there. got keys that's why I thought it was great yeah 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 you know that's yeah. a great Laoban and uh, mafia thug look yeah. Um, both these guys will be neither of those things. No, no. no. I mean, that, I took this footage down in the village, urban village near where I used to live. Very yeah. low income. Yeah. Hanging around there. Sure. Just like me. <laughs> um, now, I, I want to throw this guy in here. This okay. This is a great shot you got here of a the Mao hair look. Oh, yeah. You got the Mao hair. He's got the pants. He's got the belt. He's got keys. He's got keys. He's got the bag and he's got a freaking Laoban shirt tucked in and the mm -hmm. Mao hair. The German Mao hair. Mao hair. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah he's a top top of his game. This that's guy. a nine. Yeah, easily. This is now there we go. There's I a mean, ten out of ten. I mean, that's just a loud one. Yeah, ten out of ten. Yeah. He's got the shirt. He's got the phone. He's got the belt. Got, he's got the, the pants, swagger. He's, got the swag. he's like, ten I don't out give of ten. Shit. Ten out of ten, yeah, Lauban. Beautiful. Well, this guy's also. I. But this guy's I don't know. a little. Uh, no, he's got the pants height. Yeah, he's the, he's doing it, but you know, I think he's a bit drab. We're talking about he's a bit drab. Right. Yeah, he's, he's a bit drab. He needs some color. He needs a splash of color in there. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. He's definitely all the elements are there. You saw the keys. Right? <laughs> What's we, we'll come back okay. to that in a second. This is the just winner of life. Yeah. Okay. But you see what I mean? Like he's got the keys. Yeah, yeah. blocked by bicycle man. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there we are. This yeah. guy's an eight, uh, but yeah, two two black. It's almost like he's living in black and white here. Yeah, but he's got the keys. He's got a bag. He's got the Laoban shirt. It's tucked into his Laoban pants, which are swimming on the bottom. By yeah, the way, yeah, they got exactly. to be way too wide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. They have. They're to not be. tapered. No. <laughs> uh, and yeah, but he's too. He's just too drab. He's too drab. He needs a splash of color in there, Throw like a, little, a muted green, a or little blue. muted green, yeah. a little muted pink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's got to be something like that. This guy. Yeah, is, what's going on with this okay, guy? Okay, can we just look at this for a second? Yeah. This guy on the right, I want you guys to look, is the example of neither of those. This <laughs> yeah. guy is awesome. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit. No. He doesn't care about anything. This guy is wearing dress shoes. Yeah. He's okay. Let, let's let's. Take a look at that. He's wearing dress shoes with rolled up socks. Right. Not rolled up, like, no, like pulled up. Like pulled, pulled up, up socks. Yeah. Okay. Um, He's got anime knee, bathing suit. Knee length shorts, like yeah. swimming shorts. Yeah, it's a ba definitely swim shorts. And he's breastfeeding a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Is this guy not a Chad? Yeah, I don't think I've ever... Could, I mean, I filmed this, right? Yeah. But I can't remember. I don't I mean, remember. That's incredible. It. Yeah. This guy is incredible. Yeah. He bucks the system of everything. Yeah, he certainly does. He doesn't think he's a Laoban. No. He's probably mm. some sort of well, he's got laborer. He's got Laoban elements with his shoes and socks. Yeah. But he's strong as F. You yeah. know what I got to say about Laobans? What? They are not in good shape. No, they're like the, the opposite of good shape. Right. In fact, I think on purpose, they try to be in bad shape to show that they don't have to do any physical effort. Pinky, yeah, pinky nail grown, yeah, grown out, out, itching yeah. their ear with it. This guy is elegant. This guy's yeah. amazing. He's yeah. strong. Yeah, he's fit. He's he can breastfeed. He can. I mean, I don't know what he, what's going <laughs> on with there. He's taking a stroll through the CBD. Yeah. of the first tier Dude, city. I I filmed this right outside the Aeon. You know where I'm talking about that. Yes, that, uh, that's right there in the, the center of yes. Shenzhen. In like the best, like the richest, classiest nicest area. city. Yeah, it's in one of the nicest areas. Yeah, um, I love that man. Yeah, he is awesome, and he doesn't even look at you. He doesn't give you a glance. He's like, I don't care. I got yeah. my baby here. I'm gonna enjoy my night. Absolutely, it's freaking ridiculous. I, I want, I want to give him a name because I feel like he should be part of ADV lore. Yeah. But I don't want a name. I want you guys to think of an awesome name because we have Chinese ox, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Someone else, someone has to think of something. We have, we can have like you know someone. We can have a Lao Ban character. But this guy needs to be something. Yeah. He's amazing. Well, you know what? I reckon that guy's got quite a bit of cash stashed away somewhere. You think so? I think so. I think he's a laborer. Yeah, but I think like he, you know, he's he really saves. good at saving. So he where's he going to put all that cash though? He needs a good wallet. He definitely needs. This a good video wallet. is brought to you by Exter Wallets. Here at ADV Podcasts, it's really rare for a sponsor to step up and actually sponsor us, especially with all of the pressure from the CCP. So we were incredibly happy when a product that we actually like and use ourselves stepped up to the task. Extra wallets are classy, sophisticated, rugged, and just the right thing to change your life. Don't forget to go to shop.exter.com slash ADV Podcasts. Not only are you going to get a huge discount that's already there site-wide, but if you use our link, shop.exter.com slash ADV podcasts, you'll get a further massive discount. Don't forget to support the channel and check out Extra Wallets. Anyway, yeah, uh, I like Milcox so far as the one yeah, shouting well, at me. Yeah, well, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, yeah. uh, you know what I think? Post on the subreddit um, yeah. and we'll see if we can get a poll or like just put your suggestions on there. Someone yeah. make a super thread on the subreddit. I think that's the yeah. idea. Yeah, we'll anyway, uh, let's do a couple of super chats and we're going to move on to our main thing, which is all about Huawei. Yeah. Obviously, that's why you're here, right? Yeah. That's oh. why you guys are here. Um, it's from Quinn F. Uh, they have some interesting messages here. Thank you for your uh, generosity, Quinn F. But um, Quinn F. says, I wanted you to check out, know if you checked out uh, Vlad Vex Vexler, which is that uh, um, 
Eastern European guy that analyzes uh, Russia's propaganda stuff. I've We're, been watching him a lot. Yeah, we, we were looking at him a little earlier. I'm yeah. going to watch it properly later. Great stuff. Seems very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the, the recommendation. Uh, Free Speech want to know, uh, he ate a, a pizza and Diet Pepsi or something today. Want to know what we ate? We had Philly cheesesteaks. Absolutely yep. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. It's actually a bit of a tradition for us. Yep. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Um, David Brooks says, would uh, you like to see Borat and LAG exploring China? Um, I don't think that could ever happen. That would never happen. <laughs> That'd be have funny, ever, though. Have you guys ever worked for a charity before? Um, we've we've done charity. We did, we've uh, donated to charity. Yeah. 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 Multiple times. Well, I wouldn't say we worked for them. No, we don't we, work. We we've never them worked for charity. We thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Quite a few different charities, actually. Remember, well, we gave away the Mercedes... Yeah, actually, we've done a we've done a bunch of them. And we now. did the stuff for the trafficked women and battered yeah. women, the and NFT the, stuff, the NFT stuff, yeah, the right. earthquake uh, earthquake stuff, funds in China, all yep. sorts. Yeah. Uh, what was charity like when you were in China? Uh, almost non-existent. In fact, China is the corrupt. least. corrupt. Yeah, it's also the least charitable country in the entire world. You know that that was devastating to me. I gave my entire month's salary to help the 2008 Sichuan earthquake um, victims. Embezzled. Yeah, and then I found out later that the money wasn't sent there; it was just stolen. So that was bloody awful for me yeah anyway uh, indigo phoenix i just want to throw in there so speaking of square dance you remember please, that no please oh the memory <laughs> the memories <laughs> i know that actually makes me want to die and then i told you i was in yeah, the shop yeah, and it's like old grandpa is like got the, the cranky <laughs> yeah yeah Nisha <laughs> water shopping what now ma i'm like oh no please uh, it's so terrible Please don't bring that up again. I'll explain another time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. We're going to move on to Soft Power Hour, everybody, where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind through various different ways, nefarious and otherwise. And today, we're actually going to talk about Huawei. Yay! And China's 5G. So. <laughs> awesome. Is that done yet? Just you, you talk about fades it out. It takes forever. It's done. it's done. Okay, all right. Uh, the thing about Huawei is we all know that it's completely and utterly in every way, shape and form linked to the Chinese government. But for the longest time, they've tried to deny that. That was the thing. Yeah. yeah. They try to deny it. They're like, no, it's a private company because suddenly some countries, and I'm saying this about 20, whatever, 2018 around there, I think some countries were like, you know what? This is a security risk. All right. We probably shouldn't be allowing Chinese link, like CCP linked companies to install communications devices in our like core infrastructure because not only is it a bad idea but it's been proven that there are back doors going into these systems and you know if your government office has huawei equipment in it it's kind of dumb right because you're doing your secret files or whatever it is your cia fbi using a huawei or a zte router <laughs> and it's just I like certainly hope they didn't use it. no and it's kind of like we'll just intercept that and send sure. it back to the the ccp because one thing you have to realize is no matter what a company claims in China, if they say we're a private company, it doesn't matter because the laws in China mean and say that it doesn't matter what kind of company you are, what kind of entity you are, you must report to the CCP. If they demand mm. from you, like Tencent, for instance, if they demand the chat history of somebody um, who used WeChat, they must give it to the government. Yeah. They cannot refuse. There's nothing like that. So the, the Chinese government has full access. So if the Chinese government finds out that Huawei's got routers in, in like a, a, I don't know, something like Northrop Grum Grumman or something, they're like, oh, you've got routers in there. Well, send us any information that passes over those routers and they'll be like, okay, we have to. You know what I mean? So they can't say no. Anyway, it's, it's government linked. They tried their best to pretend it wasn't, but then they did stupid things like release this song, which we will now torture you with for a little bit in the background. By the way, these are all little kids wearing um, patriotic t-shirts that say Zhongguo on them, China. So they're wearing all their China. So this is, by the way, for those of you who missed this the first time we've covered this, yeah. just a refresher, this is Huawei saying that they are not China linked. Yeah, well, what, what happened was they, they were saying we're not China linked, but then um, you know, Huawei was starting to get some trouble. Some countries were like, you know what, we don't want Huawei anymore. So what did they do to like kind of boost morale in China is they released this on state media. Wow. 
We'll just... Yeah, we'll get to the chorus. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be stuck in my head for the rest oh, of the week. Oh, man, it's been a year. Yeah. Why did you have to bring that back? Huawei, how? Huawei, okay. May. Basically, for those of you who can't understand the lyrics, I've muted it. Don't worry, they can't hear it. Oh, we can still hear it. It's going to irritate appreciate us. appreciate that. Um, they go on about like how Huawei's beautiful and Huawei's good and Huawei's a great Chinese product and all this kind of crap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of defeats the purpose of, um, you know, because this was state media that put this was out. Was it state media? I, yeah. I remember state media denying that they put it After, out. After, yeah. because they took it down, <laughs> okay? Yeah. But it's put out on state media. And as you can see, it's linked to police and military and technology and all that in the video. They show the kids dressed up as cops, yeah. Chinese cops and Chinese F1 drivers and stuff. Whatever the case. I don't know what they're even doing. The fact of the matter is it pretty much proved the point that Huawei is going to be is linked to China. And remember how the Chinese government and the wolf warriors would always react whenever Huawei was being blocked, they'd say like, this is an assault on China, on Chinese people, on you know, mm. all this crap. If it's not government linked, you would not say things like that. No. You would not have your foreign spokesperson going out there to condemn a country saying they don't want Huawei equipment. No. That's the thing. But because it is linked so closely with the government, the government would react every single time. Yes. Like yeah, it was straight. like they couldn't keep their mouth shut. It would yeah. have been better if they did. Yeah. Why is there like a little kid with an automatic weapon and stuff? I don't Whoa. Know. Yeah. Getting dicey. Yeah. Anyway, you get the point. Um, now, there's a lot of controversy around Huawei, which we're going to go into a little bit of it here. We're not going to delve too deeply. We've just got to get past this awful bloody song. You know, one time I did a giveaway for a Huawei tablet. Yeah, I remember. It was before all this. Yeah. They just, they were like, hey, can you, it wasn't even Huawei, it was some other company or something. Was it different, it, was it? Yeah. No, I mean, Huawei was the the tablet. Oh, okay. But it was, I didn't, this is before the whole controversy, and then this all blew up, and I was like, why did I do that? Sure, sure. <laughs> I gave it away for free, but. Yeah, I used to give away uh, Chinese phones on yeah. my, on my yeah. channel. Yeah. Oppose we and China stuff. And yeah, because, I mean, you get good, cheap Thanks. stuff. Look, you have to understand that the Huawei and Xiaomi and Oppo and all those brands, like, the quality's not bad. Like, you actually yeah. get it. No, I'm, okay. there's a reason for it, though. Right. It's because they didn't have to pay for the R&D. Right, sure. Okay? Sure. So basically, you can copy something, mm. and it's about 70%, 60% as good as a, as a real thing, mm. because you didn't have to pay for the R&D. It's cheap to make. That's yeah. why you can sell it cheap. I mean, the quality's not great, though. All of my Chinese phones broke, dude. Yeah. They're awful compared to, like, oh, of course. brand stuff. I, I agree with you. Anyway, uh, Huawei and Xiaomi are on the topper, the, the higher end of Chinese quality when it comes to products. Yes, okay? I'll say that. Now, we saw a big uptick um, with Huawei kind of went on this big offensive, right? They were like, listen, we're kind of the, the rest of the world is bullying us. They, so we have, to, we have to pay people to, to make us look good. Yeah. Okay, they put out songs like this. They got the Wolf Warriors to go out there and say like Huawei is, you know, if you attack Huawei, you're attacking the, the China and all this kind of crap. And then they went and paid all these influencers. It's kind of like this ridiculous thing I'll show you. Here it comes. Oh, I better get the volume up because otherwise we'll be the only ones hearing this noise. We don't need to see this credits of this Huawei song. No, we don't. Yeah. You guys asked for it, so we're doing it. Today, we're going to the Huawei store to get a P30 Pro and destroy the iPhone. So, Ma! Pia Leong, this is it. Well, now I don't need an Apple iPhone anymore. By the way, come here. This is a real iPhone. This isn't fake. This is my phone. This is my new phone, baby! Broken. Well, I uh, yeah, I I just have to. <laughs> okay, for those of you who don't know, that's Bart Baker. He was a big YouTuber who sold out to China. Um, but they got people like that to do this whole thing. If you love China, you love Huawei. That's also why the whole Huawei, how Huawei May thing is. It was a big drive to get people to be nationalistic. I can you can kind of see the same in America. They're oh, like no. buy American or whatever. Dude, it was worse. It, it was even much worse. There was a bunch of Laoban like era type people, like lost generation people that I 
I talked to through other people and they were all talking about how they got rid of their Western phones and got Huawei or got rid of their Korean phones. Yeah. And it actually worked amongst a certain it did. demographic. It absolutely did. It was all about like, you know what, we our Guo Chan the Dongshi, you know, the stuff that's yeah. made in China, we must support it if we are patriotic. I, I will say it did not work on a certain demographic. Like people our age that had a okay amount of money were like shit. Well, another thing another Nothing. thing that happened is it did work, but then those same people went and bought the yeah. new iPhone anyway. Yeah. After the whole yeah. hype went yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Where is Anyway, I can't believe he chose that music. Yeah, and we started to see a big uptick in, um, you know, compromised influencers talking about Huawei mm. and being paid to do Huawei promotional stuff, kind of like this. I think the way America wants to go now by by closing themselves off, I think that doesn't that doesn't benefit the people at all. Mm. You know, it's like if you 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 look at. Um, Currently, Huawei. We are here at the Huawei. We are here at the Huawei. Is that something Huawei would consider using? Today we are again at the Huawei campus. As you know, I'm a massive fan of Huawei. Yeah, so yep. here's some footage I took of uh, some Huawei would, stores. I can't believe he would use that music. I know, it just suits him though. So we have these yeah. people just keep using this music. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... Huawei, is, as we all know, has... Huawei. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the thing Huawei. is, I, I got to say, Huawei <laughs> built itself on, on IP theft. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I did a video about it. It's awful. They actually caused companies like Nortel to go under because they went in and stole all of the patents. Well, not patents, stole the IP. Mm. And then they were making the same products and undercutting them and selling them back to like the, the home markets. So you can see how devastating that'd be. You get a company spending... Millions and millions and millions of dollars on R and D. Okay, they develop this this thing, which is really difficult to do. Mm. You get Huawei steals the technology, reverse engineers it. In fact, they caught Huawei um, like at, at the big trade shows. They caught a guy working for Huawei going and opening up the routers and stuff. This is many years ago, taking photos of the ICs and the circuit boards and stuff, so that they could go back and then create their own reverse engineered one. They do stuff like that. They would, you know, buy equipment or hire somebody who worked at uh, one of these other companies or pay them money to send them, whatever. Yeah. There's a whole lot of history behind this, but Huawei basically stole everything. And then they would build a, a homegrown cheap version of that, a knockoff, sell it back to the home market, completely undercut the people who had spent all the money doing the R&D. I, I want to ask you a question, though. Like, yeah. um, you, you covered the aspect of, of routers yeah. and things like that. Switches. You, and switches and things like that. That's that's more on an industrial scale. Like, yeah. Obviously, like a company near us, like BAE, BAE, BAE or whatever, right? They're not going to want to use stuff like that because it's they have government contracts and sure. stuff, right? So that's really uh, a vulnerability for them, right? Sure. But the average consumer is not going to give a shit about that, no. right? So what, what I want to ask you is that when they're doing all this stolen tech and stolen IP stuff, that's a moral issue, yeah. But like the average person that goes to Walmart and buys like a knockoff phone for their like crap plan that they don't want to spend money on, yeah. And it turns out it's a Huawei or a ZTE, right? What is? Were there any risks for the average consumer like that? Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. again, Huawei does answer to the Chinese government, and it's been found. There have been many cases where they found sort of malware running on the Huawei built-in software. There's certain things where it accesses your camera, uh -huh. a microphone, a can without your permission. Mm -hmm. You can go and read about it. There's been a lot of cases where they found that the Huawei phones or, or devices are talking back to like a server in China, for instance, and have back doors and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of security risks for the average person using this. The way that Huawei and ZTE or ZTE grew so big, though, is that they they went into developing markets and they went to the more rural parts of America, for instance. Yeah. So if you go to the middle of nowhere, you can approach the local town councils or whatever the case may be and say, like, we can install, um, you know, cellular telephone masts for Free you. Free country. Yeah. And it's cheap. Yeah. So ra rather than pay a real brand that you know in your own country, like millions of dollars, we'll do it for like... 100,000. And then what they do is they take, take the loss on purpose because they yeah. want the infrastructure to sure. be installed. So they'll undercut themselves. It's subsidized by the Chinese government. And that's how they got into America in the more far-flung places. Africa, of course, they just went in. I mean, my parents, when they you know, got their internet installed, it came with a ZTE router. 
I had I had African friends, um, both from Nigeria and Ghana, and they would go back with truckloads of of Chinese phones, sure, both Huawei and ZTE. Mm. Uh, some of even knockoffs of those ones, and then go sell them because the markup was huge. Even in these like really poor areas of yeah. of Africa, the markup was huge because you just simply can't get stuff, mm. right? So they could sell them for a lot of money. Yeah, sure. But it's the infrastructure that went yeah. in there. Yeah. So you've got these companies grew massive because they would subsidize and they'd go into these different countries and they'd get everything, yeah. you know. So it was very smart. The Chinese government, I think this, I, I suspect this was their long game was, we need to get our infrastructure out there. Mm. We'll subsidize it. Mm -hmm. So you can go and sell it for nothing. People will buy it because the closest competition they can get from a Western brand is going to be way too expensive. Mm. So why would they pay... A million dollars if they could pay, you know, a hundred dollars type yeah, thing. Correct. It's kind of the, the disparity there. So it was too attractive and many people bought that up. And it happens everywhere in the consumer market. Like if you can go buy a, a $300 Linksys router or something, or you can buy like a $50 Huawei or ZTE equivalent, you would go for the $50 one, you know, like why, why, why pay more? Yeah. So they get their devices all over the place. So anyway, um, long story short, Huawei and ZTE over a very short span of time infiltrated pretty much the entire world's markets when it comes to communication devices. Routers, cell phone towers, you know, all, all manner of different um, communication devices, phones, and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And that's when the Five Eyes countries started to take note. So the Five Eyes countries are UK, US, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And it's kind of this um, intelligence sharing community amongst the five countries that say, if some if there's an aggressive country like a, a country like China or Russia, right, mm -hmm. we will share intelligence related to that to prevent some sort of Cold War catastrophe, right? Yeah. And the arrangement means that when they come across something that they think is a security threat to one of them, that means it's going to affect all of them. It's an yeah. intelligence sharing thing, right? So. It was decided by four out of five, yeah. <laughs> five ice countries. So New Zealand, UK, US, and Canada, or not Canada, Australia, that yeah. they would ban Huawei and ZT products because of what you just illustrated, right? Yeah. I'm okay. sold on the idea that they're a danger to these people and the infrastructure of these countries. Yeah. Right? But by the way, just before you continue, sure. um, Huawei is knocked off Apple in every way, shape, or form, even their stores. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you tell the difference between the two of these side by side? No. One of them's an Apple store, one of them's a Huawei store. If you look at the Huawei store, the way it's laid out, this was their new flagship wow, store that yeah. opened. It just looks like an Apple yeah. store. Yeah. Uh, just saying, like, Huawei is not known for actually inventing anything. They've spent recently a lot of money on R&D, mm. okay, if you look at their charts. But I suspect that their spending on R&D is more about spending on people to infiltrate other companies to steal IP. I think that's where the money's going, to be honest, because they haven't actually invented anything. No. Well, they've ever, they, they really haven't, if you look at what they've done. Sure. They've taken existing technologies that already exist and implemented them, mm -hmm. which is correct. I mean, there's, uh, again, it's a weird situation here because Huawei, from a technology point of view, from somebody who's into tech, I can look at the products that they put out and I can appreciate what they're doing for the cost that they're doing it at. Mm. I can. But at the same time, I understand that the real cost of the technology that they're releasing is actually putting innovation down and taking companies that have been incredibly innovative in the past, stealing their stuff, and then giving them no incentive to I continue. was going to say, it de-incentivizes any sort of creation yeah. or creative yeah. energy. Anyway, mm. as I was saying, five ice countries. Yeah, sorry, Huawei okay. and on one side, Apple on the you other, can, which you, is... You tell me when I'm, uh, you're ready for me. Yeah, I just, <laughs> well, I just want to ask you, which one would you say is the Apple laptop out of those two? Yeah, well, I mean, I use Apple, so I know it's Mac OS, but other than that, it's All right, how about those two? Young. Yeah, you've got the same, yeah. It's kind of, well, one's got a Huawei logo on it. Yeah. It's just, it's really shameless. Yeah. Yeah. It is shameless. Oh, uh, before you continue, I just sure. love this. So Huawei released an advert. Just remember, Five, five Eyes is coming. Yeah. No, no. Take, so, finish this first. It's Huawei important. released an advert showing like, look at our, our uh, freaking camera and our Huawei phone. Look how amazing it is, right? Yeah. But what they didn't realize is that one of the, I think the actress in this posted to her Instagram her photo shoot. Because it's for the Middle Eastern market. <laughs> and then you can see they were using a pro camera. The guy's David holding yeah, it. Yeah, he's, he's, fake, he's fake holding a phone yeah. for that shot, which 
Now talk about disingenuous. I mean, that's just like, yeah. Yeah, like, oh wow, if I buy a Huawei, it's gonna look like this if I'm I take look a selfie. Like these beautiful models. Yeah, no, not on, like look at the quality yeah, of the this quality camera. The, yeah, <laughs> it's freaking amazing. Yeah. Right. Bam. Well, yeah. If you've got a pro level camera, it's gonna look like that. Not a Huawei phone. Yeah. Yeah. Just to show you that uh, they're yeah, it's an iPhone knockoff basically. But the end of the day, what you want to know about Huawei is that they're not good at making anything but they're very good at copying stuff and they're very good at being disingenuous and they're very good at lying mm. and also a massive security risk yeah no but that's the point is when yeah. they say oh we don't have any back doors in our routers it's just like they say when you take a photo with our phone it's going to look like this it's a lie yeah exactly and they're being caught out in this you have lie to, i mean if somebody's gonna if a company's gonna be that dishonest you have to hold them to the same standard of every promise they make they got caught out Paying people to write fake reviews that yeah. for a phone that hadn't even been released yet. Yep. Okay. Yep. So when they say we're not connected to the Chinese government, lies. Well, I mean, yeah, of course. Lies. We'll get. There's more lies coming up, but okay. lies rhymes with eyes. Five eyes. Continue. So these five countries, um, four of them agreed on banning these products, banning uh, Huawei stuff. They don't want to be part of the 5G infrastructure. They don't want to be part of anything. ZTE was before that, I believe. Mm -hmm. This ban was agreed upon by these countries because they're, they're saying, listen, if we're going to share intelligence with each other and we allow a Chinese state-backed company to run our 5G, the, the, the thing that controls the data transfer. Yeah, then every if one phone, of you, everything. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if one of you allows that, then we're compromised too. Right? Yeah. So if you think about Australian intelligence is communicating with New Zealand intelligence, yeah. everything that goes across can potentially be, you know, if you really oversimplify it, could potentially be, um, what's it called, compromised. Yeah. So four out of the five countries decided, you know, let's, let's ban this. Yeah. Even New Zealand. Yeah, you even, guys, even New Zealand. I, I say even because I'm sorry, but you guys are heading down a very dark path yeah. with China. But anyway... Um, Canada, for some reason, was just lagging. They just would not ban Huawei and, and ZT stuff. Mm -hmm. But that ban came, finally. Yeah. Um, and it's, that's kind of why we brought this up. You, you've put forward a great argument against Huawei. Mm. Um, but the quote from you know, the leadership in Canada was that they banned it to protect the safety and security of Canadians. And that was the go-to kind of, this is what we'll tell the public. I right? feel like it's about bloody time about for time. Canada. It's about time. Right? Considering really... the Meng Wanzhou thing, which we personally are involved yes. in. Yes, yes. So uh, immediately Huawei, mm -hmm. Huawei Canada, I should say, replied. They kept it out of China in the beginning, but yeah. they said, this is an unfortunate political decision that has nothing to do with cybersecurity or any of the technologies in question. Of course, they're going to say that, protecting their assets, protecting their profits. Mm -hmm. This is a photo taken on our phone. This is a, yes, exactly, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, rest of the countries get together, like finally Canada, what the hell took you so long? Mm -hmm. You know, We're all on the same page now. And they went on to talk about how um, it says, in, in a 5G world at a time where we rely more and more in daily lives on our network, this is the right decision. And it yes. makes a whole lot of sense. You do not want a country that's like at, quite literally at the bottom 1% of freedom indexes in the world. Yeah. In terms of manipulating media, like imprisoning people that speak out. Censoring everything. Censoring everything. And most importantly, in this case, IP theft. Yes. Trillions, trillions of dollars in IP theft to be controlling your data stream. Yeah. I, it's country. been proven over and over yeah. again. I don't know why people keep It's because listening. they're protecting their investments. Yeah. It's because these idiots out there. And I, yeah. I, I'm, I said this in my last video, if you haven't seen it. But these investors cannot admit that they were wrong. And yeah. they can't admit to the people that followed their advice that they were wrong about investing in China. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you know what? They It's blinders, right? Yeah. Huawei didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going to really run defense, but I'm going to ignore everything. And right. yeah, my investment still sounded it was a great idea. Meanwhile, everyone's like pulling the plug. Sure. Like, what are you doing? This is bad. I mean, the thing is, when when it's been proven over and over mm -hmm. and over again that you've got a malicious intent behind uh, a country, yeah. okay, like China, the malicious the malicious intent is there. We can prove it that there's been malicious intent to steal secrets, military secrets, trade secrets. You know, when it comes to IP theft, China is. The, the one country that produces what, like 80% of all the knockoff goods in the world, like everything that's copied, it comes from China. You know that the country, and by country, I mean like the industry there, the government, everything, is all part of this huge machine which profits greatly off of stealing intellectual mm. property and stealing mm. secrets 
from, you know, we've got countless stories, yeah. but stealing secrets from companies abroad. Sure. So when they have a nice, cheap communication device to put into your company, and you're an innovative company, and you're trying to create new things, why would you take that risk by putting a company's router that is connected to the Chinese government, and we know that they're connected, you cannot deny it. I mean, the whole Meng Wanzhou thing, which we'll talk about now in a minute, proves just how connected Huawei is to the Chinese government. The fact that they would do hostage diplomacy I was gonna say, on behalf- They're kidnapping people on behalf of, on a, behalf com- of a private that company. company. Yeah, if they're willing to do yeah. that, you know that that router that you've got sitting in your office, whether it be a Huawei or a ZTE, is a security risk. Mm. Because unless you're some kind of IT master who's got your own special firewall that you can actually figure out exactly what's going on, you don't know what's coming in and out of that router. You don't know what firmware's on there, what vulnerabilities, what backdoors exist in your Chinese government-linked router in your office where all your files are stored, where all your emails go in and out, where everything happens. So it's a massive security risk. And people have to start realizing you don't play with fire like that. All right? It's quite simple. Yeah. Don't cut the brake lines on your own car and then complain when you crash. Right. Anyway, the Meng Wanzhou thing, like we said, it personally affects us because we know one of the Michaels who got uh, kidnapped, basically, mm. as retaliation for Canada arresting her on behalf of the United States. Now, again, we wanted to get into how disingenuous Huawei is because there's a story that we haven't talked about enough, mm. okay, when it comes to this going? trial. Let's show you a little news, a couple of blips from a Chinese state, state television, CCTV 2, okay? Very important, actually. I'm this, glad you brought this up. Just to remind people why we've banned it. <laughs> and I yeah. say we as Five Eyes Nations, but yeah, like, why, why, and why the rest of the world maybe should pay attention to this. So now, this was during the height of the whole Meng Wanzhou trial thing that was going on in Canada. So here is some coverage on Chinese state TV about the Meng Wanzhou trial. She was going in to, for a hearing, okay? You probably saw that. Every time she went in for a hearing, there's a big hoo-ha, you know, there was always a thing. Um, let's take a look. I'm just going to skip through here. Um, blah, blah, blah. You see, here's the reporter at the courthouse, the Chinese reporter at the courthouse for CCTV. The important parts coming. It's coming. Okay. Okay, what's this interesting thing? Now, here's what the CCTV is reporting on, is that, that Canadians, okay? Let's take a look what's going on here. We've got a crowd of Canadians standing in front of the court, holding up protest signs. Okay, I'm going to clean us out of there again so you can see. It says So the CFO of Huawei, they're protesting to let her go while yeah. she stays in a mansion, by the way. Yeah, so um, you've got all these Canadians holding up signs saying free Meng, Meng, Wanzhou, Meng, Meng Wanzhou, sorry. And uh, here's the spokesperson, the kind of official spokesperson for Huawei, um, who has a bit of an interesting oh, history. I just have to say this, guys. What you just saw, this is CCTV, so Chinese state media, yeah. proving that even Canadian people yeah. are against... Meng Wanzhou's arrest and yes. want her to be freed and sent back to China. And then also admitting that it's hostage diplomacy by saying, like, let my, the Michaels go. Yeah, well, we, we have to yeah, get into sure. that. We'll explain but it. I'm leading up to this. Yeah. Their non biased source mm -hmm. for why this is bad, right? Why Meng should be released. Yeah. Is the spokesman of Huawei. <laughs> yes. The foreign spokesman, <laughs> the foreign of, Huawei. spokesman of Huawei. <laughs> Yeah, who was an English teacher in Korea who then went to work on for Samsung and then he went sure. to work for Huawei. So let's see what he has to say in English, by the way, on Chinese state television. We trust in Canada's judicial system, which will prove Ms. Meng's innocence. Huawei stands with Ms. Meng in her pursuit of justice and freedom. We hope Ms. Meng will be together with her family and colleagues and friends as soon as possible. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, but now we got to get back to these protesters, yeah. yes. okay, because this is super important. Everybody has to pay attention. I want you to read what's on these signs. So these protesters that were standing out there that appeared yeah. on Chinese state TV as Canadians are protesting because they also want Hmong to be free. And they're sick and tired of this, right? Why do they have the same font? It's all written by the same person. It says, free Miss Hmong. Bring Michael home. Trump, stop bullying us. Equal justice. Okay? Yeah. Free Miss Hmong. Bring Michael home. There's Parents. no one chanting. There's no one... Equal justice. Bring Michael home. Trump, stop bullying us. Free Miss Hmong. Equal justice. <laughs> it's the exact same things. Yeah. Bring Michael home. Trump, stop bullying us. And no one looks like they want to be there. Free Miss Hmong. Equal justice. I wish the audio listeners, I wish you could see the, their faces. They just don't give a shit. Free Miss Hmong. Bring Michael home. Trump, stop bullying us. Equal, Equal justice. justice. Bring Michael home. Trump, stop bullying us. Free Miss Hmong. Equal justice. Okay, you get the picture. Yes. Well, it turns out, everybody, that these two Chinese women you see behind us here, living in Canada, went online and contacted talent agencies and said that they needed some extras for a music video. And that they're willing to pay $100 for two hours. Um, in some cases, $150 for extras to come and appear in a music video. So word spread around and, you know, all their little, I get aspiring actor groups and stuff like that. And like agents were contacting their aspiring actors saying, we've got a gig for you. Mm. All you need to do is come stand over here at this courthouse and, uh, you know, we're going to film a music video and you, we're going to give you a sign to hold. So they arrived there and they were given a sign to hold by um, this one, this lady here. Mm. Okay. These ladies are, by the way, both tied to very dodgy kind of businesses in Canada where it's like they're supposed to work for um, like media stuff, but it's actually linked to an apartment address, which is actually uh, some real estate thing. And you can read more into this if you would like, but the fact of the matter is they're kind of dodgy. They're definitely linked to dodgy things anyway, in the Chinese community and so on. So they, would get, they paid these people. And you can see straight away... When a reporter got there and went to go and start asking questions. Okay, I want to show you this because um, it's important. Let's look. Hey, wait, what group are you with? I'm leaving, sorry. No, what's your, what's your name? You got a free Miss Mung sign? Okay, so the, the girl um, who said I'm leaving walked to her. Her, her name is Hackstaff. She's an, an actress who does these kind of gigs. And she was interviewed later. And said that when she got there and the, the reporter started to interview, she realized that this was, it was a, a, a fraud, yeah. you know? So she, props, props she, to her. Yeah, she walked away. So did a couple of the others. Mm. But she was told to go there. She didn't get paid, by the way. A lot of them didn't get paid their $100 or their $150. <laughs> what a surprise. But they arrived, okay, there thinking that they'd be in a music video. And like some of the other people said they were expecting like a car to turn up and maybe someone get out and there'd be like lights and it'd be a, a thing. So what had happened was you had these agents, presumably, allegedly, I, I can't say for sure, but presumably working on behalf of either the Chinese government or Huawei, because why else would they do it? There's no other incentive. Contacted talent agencies, got a bunch, I think it was like 30 or 40 of these guys that they approached and said, we need you to come here. We're going to pay you $100 to do a two-hour stint as an extra in a music video. And when they arrived, the lady that I showed you earlier, came and gave them all these signs, which she'd obviously written herself hurriedly. It's all written in the same handwriting. Mm -hmm. And it was just before the cameras arrived. And then magically, this scene appears in Chinese state television. It's less about, it's got nothing to do with the Canadian side of things. It's all got to do with the propaganda in China to show the Chinese people, look, even Canadians want her to be free. Even Canadians support Huawei. You know what I mean? That was the whole point. Did they even get it. a Casio watch? No, they didn't get a Casio oh, watch. Oh, man. Like I said, a lot of them didn't even get paid. Yeah. Hey, what, uh, what group are you with, and why do you want Ms. Mung uh, freed? We just want equal justice. Equal justice? How, how's equal justice? Are you aware of the extradition treaty? I'm not aware. You're not aware of the extradition treaty or the facts of the case? No, I'm not. You're not, but... Who, who, protesting equal rights for uh, my man, Ms. Mung. I mean, he, he <laughs> that guy just said he wants equal, white, equal, equal rights for his man, my man, Meng Wanzhou. He didn't even know it was a woman. They didn't know what the extradition... He, he says miss. Yeah. 
You missed that one. Does it say Miss Mung Wan Jo? I think it just he says Mung Wan Jo. My man, Miss. Oh, he did. He said my man. I want equal equal rights for my man, Miss Mung Wan Jo. Yeah, my man. You know, that's the thing. Did you know about the extradition treaty? He's like, I wasn't aware. No, I'm not aware of that. They didn't know anything. So here again, definitely Huawei denied it. The Chinese, you know, like embassy. As usual. Oh, we had nothing to do with that. Just that state media covered it and said, this is proof of yes. why Canadians are protesting. That's right. State media put it out there. Well, they, they organized it. Yeah, it, it's right. definitely, yes. definitely. I can, I can say 100% in my professional opinion. Yes. If, if I have a professional opinion, my yeah. opinion as a China watcher, that this was orchestrated by the Chinese government. And more importantly, I think, to connect this back to why we're covering this Huawei thing and why it was justifiably banned in Canada, is that they've proven that they've definitely worked with the Chinese government to coordinate something like this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you understand? It's yeah. only in their interest to do that, yeah. right? Of course, China wants to soft power win as well yeah. to get her home and stuff. But absolutely, Huawei had a massive hand in this. Correct. And this is them operating dece deceitfully yeah. on Canadian soil, co-opting Canadians to do that very thing. So yeah. why would you trust... Huawei. Yeah. Why would you trust Huawei it's if they go to these? Mirrors. Yeah. Look at this garbage it's a that they it's do. It's a thief, thief company. It is. They built themselves on theft. Yeah. And then they go and do dishonest crap like this. These poor kids, you know, they're probably just college kids. Yeah. They like thought they were going to be in a music video. Now they're being put on Chinese yeah, I blame, news. I don't blame these kids. And they no. ended up on Chinese news as propaganda agents. Yeah. They got co-opted. Like a freaking, their handle, unknown handlers are telling them what to do with these yeah. crap signs they made. I know. Isn't it just terrible? Yeah. You got to be so careful. The Chinese government and its very sneaky ways of doing things like this can catch you out. Yeah. Always, always question. Yeah. You know? So, so who, what group are you with? So anyway, and that leads us to the current situation. And I don't understand why it took Canada this long. I mean, China kidnapped your citizens on behalf of Huawei. I mean, that was... That was scary that they waited that long. When that happened, you should have yeah. been like, okay, Huawei, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, and I don't believe in the hostage diplomacy thing, but Huawei and the Chinese government kidnapped your citizens and, and led to that. So that's when you preemptively do that so that you save your, your potentially save the lives of future citizens that might get embroiled in something like this. Because yeah. they had, by the way, they had nothing to do with this. No, of course. The two Michaels. No, that they had kidnapped. nothing to do with they that. Didn't, they didn't work for Huawei. No. They didn't work for a cell phone company. No. There wasn't some com competitive business disagreement. Nope. This was Chinese government extent overreaching its power. And it was actually a huge wake up call for the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just don't know why it took Canada so long to do this. Yeah. It was seriously it was Canada. Canada is actually starting to concern me a bit mm -hmm. um, on some levels, and then on some levels they're doing well. But like uh, on a lot of things related to China, they're awfully silent. I, they're too nice. Yeah, I they're suppose, like yeah. they're like oh, you know, just sure. just treat the communists like uh, like anyone, you know. Well, I will say this: like when you, when I you know I did that whole uh, don't be unfair to communists. You yeah, know? they've when got did, feelings too. When I did my operation, gulags. yeah, when I did my Operation Fox Hunt video, yeah. Um, I looked a lot into it and it looks like, you know, from the people I talked to, like mm -hmm. the, some victims of people that reached out, they do like the legal system in Canada is taking a lot of personal cases seriously, especially like the CSIS there in Canada mm -hmm. are paying attention to the Chinese government and how they're co-opting their own citizens, like Canadian citizens. Yeah, Canadian citizens. And they're, they're working on that. Like according to the people I spoke to that reached out, they are working on that and actually finding out that Canadian citizens are ripe for being co-opted yeah. because they've turned a blind eye to it for so long, but yeah. they're now cracking down on it. That's good to so hear. It's a good, and again, this ban is also indicative of a change. Yeah, right? yeah, that's true. Let's hope it uh, starts to get a bit serious because yeah. if you if you want to play fair, you got to be on an even playing field. Yeah, if you're going to be part of Five Eyes, then play ball. Like, but not, not only that, the Chinese government has been allowed to steamroll yeah. so many countries for so long sure. and get away with such preferential treatment and not being questioned enough and being allowed to get away with, oh, you just stole our, our, our IP theft? Oh, that's okay. Let's sign a new trade deal. Yeah. What the? F you know? It's yeah. like, hey, you just stole billions of dollars worth of IP from us last year. Maybe pay it back or, you know, we're not yeah. going to deal with you in the well, future. Well, they won't admit to it in the first place. Yeah, but yeah. it's provable. I, we don't. Does it matter? It's proven. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but does the Chinese government respond to its proof? They say it's nothing. They say it's allegations. Right. Say it's, it's not true. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I'm just saying, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's about time we bring it to an even I playing I absolutely field. agree. It's just we're not playing with a fair competitor. That's, that's, that's going that's, to admit it. You got to make them yes. fair. Yes. You got to make them honest. Sure. 
Absolutely you know? agree. You, that's what behave. happens. That's they why you behave. find people. That's why you, if someone's cutting the course on the relay race, sanctions. you you ban them from the next ten races and t- so that they know next time not, not to, to do that. Yeah. Right. Good anyway, point. yeah, yeah. Well, just so. kind of had to say that. All right. So I guess it's time for us to um, take a couple super chats. Yeah. And then we're going to hit our our Wumao corner, which is kind of a dour one. Yeah. Uh, Doom and Bloom says, was that Beijing? Oh, yeah. Was that Beijing? <laughs> uh, David Lopan says, I highly recommend the movie, and I'm not going to say what it is. Because, David, you have proven time and time again to recommend very weird stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we love your super chats. We love your support. But I don't even want to know. Let me just read this. A 19th century French aristocrat notorious for his scathing memoirs about life in Russia travels to the Russian State Hermitage Museum and encounters historical figures from 200 plus years. Actually, that doesn't sound... It's that called doesn't. Russian Ark. That doesn't sound disturbing, David. I just shouted out your movie. There we go. Um, Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, Enu Batan says, I'm curious about locking of borders and going to Hong Kong. Uh, of going to Hong Kong. Most of my coworkers are Chinese, and one of the waitress's wife was thinking about coming back to Hong Kong to see her mother. Would she get detained? Not detained. That's not how it works. No. Not detaining people. They're canceling, la- not allowing people to leave China. Yeah. Uh, canceling travel documents and stuff. Now, my newest video, it's in the description. It's called No One Can Leave China. It's true. Uh, the vast majority of people we've spoken to and that have reached out about this uh, cannot leave China. Yeah. And yeah, please actually put out a, a, an official yeah. document saying that they're don't, restricting. Don't take chances, no. guys. Don't take no. chances. If you have the choice, just don't do it. Uh, Putin mm-hmm. says, have you heard of any Chinese not being able to renew their passport in America? At the Chinese embassy, yes. They're not renewing stuff. Here in America, too? Um, well, here's the issue. The people I spoke with in the embassies in the U.S., in the Chinese embassy, I spoke to people in Chinese embassies in the U.S., and most of their calls are related to people calling saying, why can't I come back to America from China? Because China's not right. allowing them out. Um, I can't report 100% with accuracy on, like, are they renewing passports in the embassy in America? I'm going to assume they might. Because, no, I think they are, because yeah, a friend of mine... them to go back. A, f- a friend of mine did that. They mm. knew that there's a chance that it's not going to be renewed in China, so they yeah. actually renewed it abroad, and that makes, it, it worked. That makes more sense. And there are agents now that are kind of doing that where they mail your passport abroad and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's that's always been a thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, friendly reminder to be kind in these times. Spend time... With your family, clear up misunderstandings, mend bridges, and take care of your health. Thank you very much. Hope that that goes for everyone. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, If you had to go to the toilet badly, would you use the rural Chinese toilets or the worst toilet in Scotland in the movie Transpotting that Obi-Wan uses? That is a loaded question. I just go in the bush. Just go in the bush. Mitch's World Travel. Thank you. Doc Sodington, old Doc, back again for 109. Nice. Uh, Friend of the channel, Doc. It's insane to me how little coverage of what's happening to these people gets in the States. If this were happening in Europe, there would be nonstop coverage. Interesting. Yeah. So we're going to move on. Sure. Let's move on. It's a uh, Wumao Corner where we talk about uh, the haters. Now, unfortunately, today we're veering a little bit off of the internet haters. Although, no, actually, they are they are a part of this, a big part of this. Um, those of you um, in the States may have heard of this awful situation of this guy who well, shot there are up two, a church. Two recent shootings, both yeah. horrific. Yeah. Uh, this one's getting a little bit less coverage, though. It's a lot less coverage. Yeah. Um, now, I have a friend who was actually working right next to the church, and he sent me some information. Mm-hmm. So let me just see if I can pull that up here. Give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> Don't give away too much info. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. So apparently this is according to... Okay, uh, this guy told me about... Um, what happened there as they were wrapping up the food portion a coward pulled a, out a gun and this is at a church yeah we should yeah. probably like, at, the, at the church there was a, ch- ch- a taiwanese church in yeah. california that got shot up now six you know. inches away from this one guy um I, uh, this guy noticed a young father run uh, around a nearby turn table and run towards the gunman the coward shot the man three times and he sacrificed his life and the pastor simultaneously grabbed a chair and struck the coward. Three others lunged to tackle the downed gunman. Um, the pastor's wife procured an electrical extension cord and many tied and, and many people tied him up, basically. Um, now, the story is this guy actually went and lay in wait and he tried to... Uh, he tried to close the doors and lock them and super glued the locks to try and prevent people getting in and so on. He had 
um, ex- Molotov, cocktails. Molotov cocktails on him. He had weapons and he lay in wait to basically come and attack the Taiwanese community. It turns out the guy is originally a mainland. He's from mainland China. He moved to Taiwan. He got embroiled in this uh, reunification movement, which is, you know, they want Taiwan to be a part of China, you know, just like China wants Taiwan to be a part of China. He got kicked out of Taiwan because of his Peace, radical... Peaceful reunification. Yeah, yeah. peaceful reunification, yeah. He got kicked out of Taiwan because of his radical beliefs. Yeah. He ended up living in uh, the States, became a naturalized American citizen. Yeah. Uh, had a whole bunch of personal things go up, messed up in his life, and then he decided that he's going to take his aggressions out on the Taiwanese community. And he went specifically to this place. What's it? Laguna Hills? Yeah, Laguna Hills. Church La- Laguna something. Hills. That is a very well-known area, by the way, for Taiwanese, Taiwanese, Taiwanese people and Taiwanese dissidents. Mm. So he specifically targeted, because he's from Nevada. He, f- he drove all the way from Nevada to that specific area. And he went to that specific church known to be a Taiwanese church. Mm to go and attack Taiwanese people. So mm. it's political, politically motivated because he wants Taiwan and China to be one yeah, country. So, yeah, so this was a pro-unification church. Yeah. So these these dissidents that you're speaking of are actually like the majority of Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> majority yeah, of Taiwanese yeah. people, they're dissidents no, they're, by they're not, China. Kind of no, no, not a pro-unification church. The, the church he went to was. No, it. I'm saying pro-independence. That's what pro-independence I'm saying. Yeah. church, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a I'm pro-independence saying, Yeah, church. what I'm saying is that they'd be considered dissidents by the Chinese government. Yes, yes. And the Chinese government would be in support of someone like this, the beliefs of Taiwan should be unified with China, Yeah. right? So he went after people that support democratic independence of Taiwan that is not part of China. I'm not talking about like the Republic of China versus People's Republic of China. I'm talking about people that just want Taiwan to be its own country. Yeah. Right. So he went to go kill them and he did. Yeah. So, you know, it's an unfortunate situation that these politics that this and this stuff has been shoved down every Chinese person's throat since they were in preschool. Yeah. And it's all about how Taiwan belongs to China Mm. and that they're like a naughty brother that ran away and they've got all these stupid like analogies that they use but basically we will take it back by yeah. force and yeah. anyone who says that you know taiwan is not a part of china is our enemy type thing so this guy just took it to the extreme anyway he's been caught and he's been charged with uh, murder and attempted murder and uh, federal hate crimes yes federal hate crimes because it is a hate yeah. crime he targeted a, a group based on a their relig- based on their religion, religion slash, slash ethnicity and slash political identity yeah anyway now the the part that really is disturbing about all this never mind the fact that it's not getting a lot of coverage in the news which is yeah. is unfortunate and it it's just just the way it is because it doesn't fit the political narrative or whatever the case may be sure. you know um is the the kind of response we've seen on the chinese internet so do you want to read some of these remember this yeah. is the, our friends the great translation movement mm-hmm. by the way if you haven't i believe they did this i'm pretty sure it yeah. looks like them it does look like yeah them. um what did they have to say? Uh, it says, this is the news translation, right? So it talks about the, the shooting, right? Mm. And they, uh, the way they frame this is different than what you'd read in the news here. And it's right. just important that I say that his name, I'm not going to say his name, by the way, opposed Taiwan independence, right? Yeah. He opposed Taiwan independence. So they didn't frame it as in, oh, he went out there and he was a piece of shit that mm-hmm. murdered these poor innocent people and Dr. Chang, the guy that rescued, like, saved, like, re- yeah, he shot the doctor, the, I think he's 52 years old. Yeah, that guy, sacri- Dr. Chang, sacri- sacrificed himself yeah. to save the rest of the congregation. Mm. It's not about that, right? It's about, oh, he opposed Taiwan independence. Yeah. That's a highlighted issue here, yeah. right? It says, the police said that his motive was hate crimes, dissatisfaction with mainland Taiwan relations, dissatisfaction with people in the Taiwan community. Taiwan, and then they have to put in Taiwan independence because that's a swear word in Chinese. Yeah. When you say Taiwan independence, that's actually like saying Nazi. Yeah. Right? So then immediately you dehumanize someone and you yeah. bring them down to a point where like, oh, well, it was just those guys. It was just those cockroaches. Yeah. It was just those vermin. Yeah. Right. By the way, uh, it's Laguna Woods is the area. Laguna, that's what you said. Did I say Laguna yeah. Woods? Okay. <laughs> I thought I said Laguna Bay or something. No, you said Woods. Okay, right. Um, and it says there was anti-Taiwan material in the car, but more proof is needed, right? So then it goes on to the the up, some of the upvoted comments here, yes. right? It says, isn't, is, isn't this the first shot of anti-Taiwan independence war? So it's basically saying, and the way you can really translate this is this, is this the beginning of us taking back Taiwan? Yeah. Right? And what they do is, again, it's this, de- you know how like Russia did this with like the denazification yes, of the yes. Ukraine? <laughs> what they do is they throw out this word so much that people get used to it and say, well, that's not human beings. Those are Nazis. Yeah. Oh, Taiwanese independence people? That's not the let's take back Taiwan movement. That's the 
anti-Taiwan independence movement because that word's already been attributed to basically Nazism sure, or something sure. like this, right? So it says, isn't he a righteous man? And that gives him prayers. Yeah. Right. Next one says, someone said he was born in mainland China. Is obviously just asking a question. It says, maybe he was framed, right? <laughs> and then the right. last one says, hero, I hope he's safe. With three prayers. Yeah, it's not very nice. No. But this is what you kind of expect. You know, this kind of vitriol is allowed on Chinese internet. It's, it's encouraged. I, I personally, when I saw, I mean, this was not widely covered, I will admit. China didn't go out there to put this on mainstream news to say <laughs> celebrating it. Like, that mm. would be probably a bad No, look. they didn't do that. But what I did see out there was more of a, um, this guy was good. He's fighting yeah. for, our, for our China. Yeah. And he's well, taking I mean, out the people, pro-independence people. People calling him a hero. Yeah. Anyway, just it's uh, pretty gross. That is that's that's our Wu Mao corner yeah. for today. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's mm -hmm. awful. Any of any doesn't matter who, what, when, where, why, doesn't matter yeah. the circumstances, any of these uh any kind of attack on anyone is bad. Sure. You we, know? By the way, I just want to make a correction, like a, a future correction, depending on because it, it's just yeah. not clear yet. We do know he's part of the pro unification movement, um, which is it, it can be linked to extremist activity. What I do want to say is we don't know if he was born in mainland China or Taiwan. We do know that he's pro-China and pro-unification, though. Every Everything that I've been reading so far it's is just that, that he's born, that has, that's the one born detail, in mainland China. That's the one detail that has not been confirmed yet. I'm going to I'm going to say that I believe okay. that that's true. I can I can say I probably believe because it. Because I've seen sure. from many multiple credible sure. sources have said that. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, just saying fact, just to just to be factual. Fact is that, that he yeah, pro-unification. He purposefully attacked Taiwanese people because he doesn't Correct. because he wants Taiwan to be a part of China. That is 100% the case. <laughs> it's politi part politically the case. motivated yep. and it's awful. Yes. Anyway, uh, time for us to move on to uh, Worldview. Let's just have a yep. big yum cha. We'll just get straight to it. Sure. Worldview, we would talk about what's going on in the world, um, specifically with regards to China. As we all know, it's kind of like what's new, but not. Yeah, except, yeah, not. This is kind of interesting. It you, is. You talked about this. I didn't even know about this. Explain what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so what you're seeing here, there's a, a couple of photos you see. It hasn't been a whole lot of footage, but they're, um, yeah, I like this one. Yeah. There's a massive sinkhole that opened up in Guangxi province. And uh, the thing is, there's a lot of sinkholes in China. It's just mm. the way things work. This is called a karst sinkhole. Yeah. We've been through the karst regions, region of China. It's these Dr. Seuss looking mountains. Yeah, they're really Crazy. cool, like very lime cool. limestone mountains. It's amazing. Mm. Anyway, it's a very, it's a brittle substance, right? Mm. So what happens is it, it you know, karst regions are, they succumb to sinkholes, which are these massive yeah. pits that kind of develop. And you'll yeah. see it happen in cities. They'll, you know, the, the geo, what are those people called? That Like survey, surveyors, right? Mm -hmm. The surveyors that go around and bring geologists with them are supposed to find out where there's geological activity, where there should be sinkholes, and try to avoid those areas. Unfortunately, they spring up in China all the time. Yeah. Mainland China. You've seen like people entire swallowed blocks up. swallowed yeah. up and terrible things that happen. Cars get swallowed yeah, up. Yeah, you see it a lot. Yeah. People just get sunk into the ground. But this happened out in the wild. Yeah. And it opened up. And when it opened up, it wasn't just a hole. It actually opened up an entire ecosystem and a forest that was yeah. under the ground. That's really cool. Which is fascinating. They found this, uh, I think, like seven months ago or something in Yunnan as well. Mm. Um, this is a new one. And so it opened it. There's just this huge forest. And I hope that when they're spelunking down there, because they're currently looking at it, yeah. That they find like some new species and stuff because yeah. they have found new species when doing this before. Yeah, they this find like a, weird see through shrimps and stuff. Yeah, and like uh, salamanders and things like yeah. that, right? Now, what's interesting about this is it's an. Un maybe they'll find Peking man. Maybe they'll find Peking <laughs> after <laughs> yeah. all this time. Yeah, you know? it's proof. But what I like is this is untouched, unspoilt nature in mm. China that can be discovered because there's probably so much that's been lost to development. Yeah. Right, an industrialization yeah. that China's gone through, just unadulterated. Yeah. Um, so this opens up a whole new world. Yeah, it's very like cool. Words. I like it. It's cool. super cool. Very cool. Yeah. So other than sinkholes. <laughs> very cool, though. Underground, yeah. Like other that. than very cool sinkholes, what else do we have? We have. <laughs> oh, we have the desert, the desert stormtroopers, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right. So we all know that this COVID thing is getting kind of ridiculous. I'm going to talk more about it in Yamcha because I've got a lot of information from some sure. of my friends in Shanghai. We're going to clear up exactly what's going on there. But um, what's going on here? So in Western China, 
they realize that they're kind of having a problem. You know, that they're pushing this zero COVID thing, right? Right. And this, their new propaganda effort is to like, look at the rest of the world that's being like, what is going on in this crazy dystopian nightmare with them spraying disinfectant all over wearing hazmat suits? Yeah. And they're just doubling down. Sure. They're like, okay, let's do a propaganda video where there's a thousand of these guys spraying disinfectant sure. and ruining everything. Yeah. Like, but wait a minute. What about rural Western China? Like the desert regions and stuff. We got to get some propaganda out there. So they get these medical workers in full hazmat suits for your listeners out there with hammer and sickle flags. Yeah. Gong Tan Dang, which is on the horses. Chinese Communist Party. On horses. Going out there to test the locals. You got people standing on a sand dune, by the way, in a line yeah. about to get tested. I got to yeah. tell you, that's the stupidest thing ever. We got vaccinations and testing happen out in the desert. I mean, you know, the population density is really not an issue over there, right? No. It's open air desert. Yes. (laughs) I think getting them in that line. (laughs) That was propaganda. Yeah. But getting them in that line is more dangerous than just leaving them be. Right. Okay. You got to wear a mask when you're on a sand dune in the middle of Western China. Yeah. That's how it goes. And those guys, though, seriously, it is. It's like stormtroopers or something. It's just outlandish. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane that they thought this was going to be appealing to people. I mean, even Chinese people are laughing at this. Like, what are you doing? Why are they all lining up on the top of a sand dune anyway? That's the thing is that they're so out of touch that they get this order from the government and they do it and then they put it out online and Chinese people are like, they're getting banned for laughing at this because they're like, you're so out of touch with what people think. They think their citizens are actually like mentally challenged. Yeah, I mean, look, because... It doesn't make sense. If you actually look at this layout, I'll go back a little bit. You can see the testing vehicles and stuff. Actually, let me, I'll just play it from here. The testing vehicles, where they've got all the equipment and stuff, look, it's down there. Okay? It's down. It's down in the valley or whatever. But they marched everyone up to create a queue on the top of the sand dune, rather than just test them down there where all the stuff is. Yeah. Isn't that dumb? It's kind of like the truck thing where they don't back up to the yeah, source. Yeah, because they, they, they probably thought it's going to look better and more picturesque yep. to have everybody lined up on the top of a freaking sand dune Yeah. rather than just let them get tested down where the actual stuff is. They drove up there to drop them off. To go stand to on a sand dune. To go line up in a sand dune. Yeah. And then have horseback <laughs> medical workers with communist sickle flag, hammer and sickle flags. It's dumb. It's incredible, really. Yeah, it's really dumb, though. Yeah. Incredible or not, it's stupid. What else can I say? (laughs) Where are they going? (laughs) They're just being dumb, is what they are. Anyway, guys, it's time for us to hit our Yamcha, which is our Q&A section of the show where we relax, uh, you know, chat, have some fun. I'm going to update you all on the whole situation happening in Shanghai. For those of you who are watching us live, you get to watch this, and it'll stay up for the weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show. But if you're a patron, you'll always ca- be able to catch uh, it whenever uh, you want. Where is the patron? Where can oh, they find the episode? Oh, this? this? Oh, so you guys okay. can go to patreon.com slash podcast and you'll support the channel and see the uncut show. Yeah, anyway, uh, I'm loosening my tie in the background here. You can't see it, but it's happening. I promise you. You don't. They don't need to watch you do it. It's a bit like naughty. No, yeah. it's totally fine. Anyway, there we go. 